He's out. Andrew Scheer's exit, it isn't a complete surprise. The Conservative leader was widely criticised for not doing better after the Liberals won a second mandate. But a big part of that criticism came from a concerted campaign to take him out. I will be resigning as the leader of the Conservative Party. Andrew Scheer stepped down less than two weeks after launching a website and Twitter account called Stand With Scheer, fronted by Senator Denise Batters, with the message, tell Andrew you have his back. We've done it before, and we can do it again, but only if we stay united under Andrew Scheer's leadership. Meanwhile, the dump Scheer movement kept growing, like this website called Conservative Victory, asking, is Andrew Scheer the best person to lead us forward? It was launched by Conservative Big Guns, Corey Tanaik, a former senior advisor to Stephen Harper and Ontario Premier Doug Ford, and Jeff Ballingall, the man behind Ontario Proud and Canada Proud. The first public hint of dissent came just days after the vote, when former Tory cabinet minister Peter McKay said this. To use a good Canadian analogy, it was like having a breakaway on an open net and missing the net. <laughs> <laughs> that message attracted a lot of attention and made a lot of headlines. Team Scheer did fight back, arguing he'd won the popular vote, that like Stephen Harper, he would form government next time around. Well, we won more seats, won the most votes, and nobody is more eager to get it right the next time. But it wasn't enough. During the campaign, Scheer was repeatedly criticized over his personal stance on abortion and same-sex marriage. But after he lost, some social conservatives turned on him too. In the Globe and Mail, Alyssa Golub, the co-founder of the influential anti-abortion group Right Now, called his stance confusing and garbled, saying he could have done better. The other side on that issue went public too, and a lot of the critics had close ties to Stephen Harper. Like the former interim Conservative leader, Ron Ambrose, who tweeted, I was proud to have been the first Tory leader to march in a pride parade. It's time to move forward together and show all families we have their backs. And from Rachel Curran, Harper's former policy director, who wrote, Canadians will never make someone PM who has a faith-based problem with gay marriage and supporting the LGBTQ community, but feel free to try. Now, the next public battle has begun. This one over who will replace Sheer. Paul Wells is a McLean's columnist and author, and he joins us from Ottawa. So you've seen so much of this over the years, Paul, and, and now you're writing good luck to the Conservatives to try and find someone who'll win next time. What, what do you mean by that? Well, to some extent, what they've just done, gotten rid of Andrew Sheer, was the easy part. Picking someone who will do better than Andrew Sheer is the challenge. You need someone who's going to reconcile region, ideology, um, uh, urban-rural divides. Uh, it's a big country. It has proven historically difficult for conservatives to govern. Uh, anyone who thinks they can win this by, with a sort of a formula and by reconciling arithmetically the different factions and doling out little uh, talking points, that's not what does it. You need to be a force in Canadian politics, and those are rare. We're seeing that a lot of the push came from, this is not surprising, he was the former leader, uh, but there are senior strategists, former senior strategists for Harper. How big a force is he here? Is there any way he'd run again? I don't think so. Um, first of all, Harper's moved on, uh, at least in terms of his, his uh, money earning ability. <laughs> uh, he's making more money now in the private sector as a consultant. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people who very much enjoyed governing uh, with Mr. Harper for a decade there, uh, would regret the message they'd be sending if they had to go back to him. It's essentially saying that this is a one-leader party. And over the longer term, that's a, that's a bad uh, message to send. It appears the final straw may have been the revelation that money was going from the party to pay for the private schooling for his kids. Um, but yeah. we've seen those sorts of things in the past. Is this really that bad, or is this just because there was a concerted effort to get rid of him? Um, there is now a conservative technique of uh, more than two decades standing of every time someone uh, is seen as a problem or an opponent, uh, they go into their legitimate uh, expenses uh, incurred by following publicly available rules and cry scandal. And crucially, it's what Stephen Harper did when he leaked uh, Preston and Sandra Manning's expenses in 1995. Um, to sort of, you know, cry scandal and say, I'm shocked to discover there's expense account uh, uh, padding or reconciliation going on here. No, this is the way the party works. So what are you going to watch for now? 
Um, hopefully a leadership process that is a little bit more ruminative, a little bit more contemplative, a little bit less sloganeering than the one in 2016, 2017. What um, are you expecting? Um, pretty much a replay of the same thing. Uh, people competing for applause in crowded uh, halls of dedicated partisans. Um, uh, it, that's hard to avoid. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, le leadership races are essentially membership drives. What you're mostly trying to do is sell new memberships uh, for people who don't have any previous experience and who are blindly loyal to your preferred candidate. And, uh, and, and that dynamic tends to um, uh, encourage sloganeering. Um, but what, what Andrew Scheer found out in spades is that his slogans weren't very helpful when it came time to try to govern. Paul Wells, great as always to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you.